I'm Joe Kane. I'm Sal Conca. And I'm Wayne Heckler. And this is the Imperfect Podcast. Don't forget to check us out at hecklercane.com and everywhere on social media. To the bumper. A little bit about Bad Mary. They draw from their influences like Blondie, the Ramones, Green Day, and Paramore. But they've created their own strain of punk that takes you back to New York in the 70s, but with a modern vibe. Following up on their critically acclaimed debut, Better Days, which was released in 2013, the high-octane four-piece group led by powerhouse singer Amanda Mack, Mike Staub on bass and vocals, Bill Mack on drums, and David Henderson on guitar, they split their latest blast of infectious in-your-face songs into two driving EPs, Killing Dinosaurs in 2015 and We Could Have Saved the World in 2016. Hey guys, how you doing today? Oh, uh, good. Pretty good. great. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So why don't you get us started with a song? I believe you're going to start with Space Girl. Yeah, that's, uh, that's off our first album, Better Days, and uh, are you ready? Hello Earth, can you hear me? You won't believe what I've seen Out in the farthest reach of space My eyes have seen creation My ears witness destruction My skin has touched alien race The people home, they don't know They won't believe my story You gotta tell them what I've seen There's four eyeballs out here in space It's cold and terribly lonely When I come back People need to see and believe me But you won't tell them I blasted off past Venus Basked in a solar flare storm I flew past Pluto and beyond Pluto and beyond Stop to relax on Neptune I danced through the rings of Saturn Proved in space we're not alone We are not alone The people at home, they don't know They won't believe my story You gotta tell them what I've seen I'm just a spirit for eyeballs out here in space It's cold and terribly lonely When I come back People need to see, see and believe me But you won't tell them Sang the shit out of that. That was really cool. Really Thanks. like that. That was <laughs> badass. So, what was the inspiration for that song? Um, oh robots. I don't know. <laughs> robots <laughs> in space. You know, it's, that's pretty much what it was. I wrote that song, or at least the premise. I, I think I wrote. Actually, I think I wrote all of that song for the most part, right? You did. I kind of messed around with the vocals a little bit, but that was that was a you baby. That was that was mostly me. Uh, you know, we uh, Bad Mary. We write songs kind of almost like two different ways. It's like um. David, our guitar player, he'll come. He'll write something really cool on his own. He writes stuff pretty much soup to nuts. Um, and then Amanda and I will. Well, kinda... Yeah, he'll give me like lyrics mm -hmm. or like an idea of like I have this rhythm, and then here's the stuff that I'm gonna play and do something. And I'm it takes <laughs> it takes a little while to kind of like. But yeah, create around that. Exactly. Yeah, yeah it's right. really cool. It's always interesting to see what it morphs into because it never. Mm -hmm ends up the same way that it was when we first like and like he'll bring he brings really great ideas to the table with the stuff he writes and some of the songs he writes I, I mean I absolutely love playing I mean our fans absolutely love some of those songs too 
Um, and uh, and then there's the David always jokes around. So there's, there's there's David songs that started with him, and then the songs that start out with us. And Space Girl was a song that I think I had actually written about three or four years before the band even thought about starting writing original music. You know, I was uh, I was I was uh, in my bedroom at my parents' old house, and I was playing around on a keyboard that I had in there, and I came up with that little um, that little riff. Uh, from the chorus, this, the, the the overarching theme for the chorus that I originally wanted on keyboards, and I was working on a weird concept album at that time. It was a mistake, <laughs> um, but it wasn't We've actually. It wasn't called. Experience. It wasn't called Space Girl at that time. It was something it was artistic else. Artistic development. It was something else. Okay. It was it was somehow weirder, uh, stranger than what Space Girl is about, and I think. I'll dive into it at another time when uh, when I'm feeling brave. <laughs> um, uh, album's respected release date is uh, 2036. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> exactly. Really working on it. It's never then. did, right? Yeah. It just came the concept is never going to go away. So yeah, we wrote Space Girl and we included that in our first album. And uh, it gives us this kind of like homage to a lot of punk bands. While we do like to write stuff that's aggressive and has lyrics that are about like self-empowerment and, you know, just you know, if you need just an angry song to like, mm-hmm. just say revolution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like a revolution type song. But like Space Girls, like we also want to pay homage to the stuff that we like. And uh, I'm a big fan of sci-fi and uh, movies and video games and comic books and all that stuff. So that's kind of playing upon that. And well, also, um, you get to have a lot of fun with that. Like mm-hmm. Space Girl is so, it's a silly song, but when we play it live, sometimes I just get very like, this is so serious. well i gotta tell you i really appreciate uh, you see a lot of punk bands out there and a lot of you know that label themselves as punk bands they don't have harmonies that are going quite as intricate as what you guys are doing Uh, you don't see that out there so yeah especially from local talent i find like a lot of times i mean they're i mean well you know we're big green day fans i mean they're they're bringing the harmonies a lot and all that stuff and um but you guys are definitely a little more polished in that area i think than some of the other bands we've heard so I think there's, that's, there's yeah. definitely just a, a musicality to it. You know, it doesn't just because you have a certain attitude behind your music doesn't mean you can't bring, you know, so it doesn't mean it has to have it either. It's just, yeah, cool. I think, yeah, I think it. that we, you know, Amanda and I can sing together uh, and do harmonies. Um, I don't want to say it comes natural because we do work on them. Um, but I think your her background in theater and uh, musical theater in general, my background in music and ear training. I went to school for for music. You went to school for theater. I also went to I school did. for business. You answered my question for me. Yeah. So then, awesome. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was I was I was kind of curious about what the musicality. Where does the background come from? Yeah, so. uh, I'm a jazz We'll guy. scratch that question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> when like my dad song. and I actually first started ever performing together it was when I was like younger, doing community theater, like musical theater programs and stuff like that. He was always a drummer. Like growing up, my whole life, he always played drums. Was always in bands. Um, so when I was a kid, and like there. Um, theater arts training program almost they had like an after school like we would go a bunch of days a week um he would play in the pit for those shows so that's kind of how cool we started doing that together and the lead singer his band when i was a kid is actually the person that got me into it when i was younger because i saw her up on stage she's like oh she looks really cool i'll try that okay <laughs> we played in plenty of pits ourselves yeah, yeah. we yeah. played in a whole yeah. bunch yeah. of pits. Yeah, that's yeah. a fun animal there absolutely <laughs> sure <laughs> do you um do you play any instruments as well amanda or i've attempted several um <laughs> you can none. play one song on piano. i was in the recorder club when i was in junior <laughs> high school ah. <laughs> oh, awesome <laughs> rocked that joe probably has one for his kids we could bring <laughs> Down so here, cool. if you want to play, I have I have a full set. We could all do it like a nice, uh, you know, quintet here if we like. <laughs> My friend Lily plays two at the same time. <laughs> oh well, there you go. I'd you prefer that, if we didn't like, stick. I don't know if I can top that, so I might have to just leave the recorder. Hot cross is. buns and harmony. Never beat it. She yeah. did that. I, I, yeah, that's that was impressive. <laughs> you can play one song on piano, right? I can play like parts of. I can I can hit piano keys. Oh, that's <laughs> that's I can do. It can make pushing noise. buttons. That's awesome. I have to say, man, you have a very strong voice. It reminds you a little um, Pat Benatar ish. Not not to narrow you down to a style, but in a very good compliment. I, I mean that would never it's very strong. Be upset with anyone. Right. Making that reference, even right. if you were narrowing <laughs> down to that Right, style. right. Like, that's, but that's, really strong, both of you guys. I mean, I'm very impressed. I really enjoyed oh, thanks. that. Yes. Thanks. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Amanda, yeah, she, she, uh, she's got that power, man. Yes. That's, that's... I've heard also that Pat Benatar is like a trained opera singer. Oh, I mean, oh. why not? So theater for so you, you, opera you for her. Yeah. So you maybe you and Pat. And if that's me... not true, it was a Snapple fact. I read it earlier. Blame right. them. What's true? I don't know. Blame Snapple. No way, we're sponsored by Snapple. Sorry, Should we bleep that out? (laughs) No, (laughs) definitely not. (laughs) Um, So how long have you guys been together and writing together? Um, 
Well, our... I Which came I, first, the relationship or the music? Well, I don't question. think we even got we into this. We <laughs> knew each other first. Okay. So yes. we knew each other for several years before the band started, but we mm-hmm. weren't like together. We weren't super close, but like we were always in the same circles. Did you, I don't know. Maybe you'll say something no, different. No, Did you know that you were both musicians when you knew each other? Like you knew that. Um, part he wore of headphones other? a lot, so I knew he liked music. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, but, I, was, uh, I played. I played uh, trumpet in college. I played trumpet all throughout college. Um, I'm a jazz trumpet player um, originally. That's like my first instrument, my main instrument. Awesome. Um, I learned bass when I was about 13. My brother got a bass for like his fifth grade graduation and didn't play it. He was like, "I'm done. You can have it." So I took it and I learned how to play bass. I played in bands all throughout high school. And I played with bands in, in college, and I met Amanda, I hung out with the theater kids because a friend of mine uh, that I went to high school with, also went to college with, he got me, he's a theater guy, so he uh, got me involved with the theater kids. I met Amanda probably like 10 or 12, 10 years ago or so. Um, we started dating way after that. Um, we started dating about six years, a little bit over six years ago. Yeah. And um, we had been in the band, but not writing music at that point in time. We were in a, a, a cover band originally. We used to play all the drama department um, yeah, the, like, uh, uh, parties, parties and, and functions. Campus or fundraisers. Our, our guitar player David, who um, who uh, he was the chair chair of Hofstra University's drama department for a while, nice. and um, he still has a band on campus, mm-hmm. um, and it's comprised of whatever students are there that can yeah, play, sure. and they usually that's how we kind of started that's, playing together. What happened um, is, is we we start we were playing in that so it's band. Still, there's there's some group now so it's just kind of a tradition that's like nice yeah, we, like SNL where they just replace yeah. characters every yeah. year <laughs> like, like that. It's, like they, it's a David and the Henderson yeah there David Henderson go. it's his band so. and, cool. and uh and he they, they're actually a lot of fun uh, we played uh, fun. we played I played with them when I was uh, at the end of my college career and I started playing um I played guitar and bass for them um in those days and that's where David and I really got close and became really good friends and um after we played a Christmas show or a holiday show um at Hofstra, a holiday party, and uh, I remember turning around to everyone. I'm like, "This is a lot of fun. Do you guys want to continue to do this after the year's over? Because you know, well, really, it would be the end of the year, and then we the band wouldn't play, and they would get together just for the for holiday party." That and the, grouping too, though, we were all planning to stay like in the Long Island yeah, area. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna be a lot close. of times you could people will graduate and they'll either like stay here or move. Mm-hmm. You know, so we were all like, "Hey, we're gonna be around. Why don't we?" Yeah, we were hanging around. We would go to David's yeah. house every Sunday sure. and work on new music and stuff, and making that band really good, and then. We decided to, you know, keep the cover band together because we liked it. And uh, eventually, after a couple of years, I hadn't written a mu- original music um, in a while. I wrote a lot of original music when I was in high school and at the beginning of college. I played with bands. And I t- went to Dave and I'm like, I really want to start writing. And he looked at me and he was like, I really want to start writing too. So we both kind of started writing on our own. And then Amanda and I really started, you know, we were already dating at that point and we really started uh, coming up with cool ideas. I would throw ideas at her. Luckily, she's a really good uh, lyrics editor. So... Mm. My my I was an English major. Yeah, well, so. yeah, that helps. helps. Comes Thomas in handy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, my uh, you know, comes words. in handy. Right. I'm not the strongest. I'm not the strongest lyricist. Uh, I find you know I find vocal lines and hooks before I find lyrics, and I'll give Amanda a general idea. I'm like, this is a line that I have, and I want you to run with it. Uh, we wrote a song called Soapbox, which is on uh, Killing Dinosaurs. I think it's the first song on Killing Dinosaurs. Yeah, it is the first and the only line I had was the first line of the song, which was, "I'm not asking a question." And I said to Amanda, "I'm like." This is the main lyric. This is the idea I want. I want kind of like I'm kind of like you're sick of kind of like you're sick of people who who are loud and annoying. <laughs> so um, so she it's ran. It's one with of it. those you can kind of like attribute it to what you're feeling at <laughs> yeah. that time. Like we have sure. a couple of those that it's like, a, what do you think this is about for you in your life? Great, scream it. You know, so right. it's, <laughs> it's one of those songs. So yeah. we yeah. we ran with that, and, and luckily I have that. And you know, I love writing with. Uh, with David as well. Well, you wrote the bridge for that too, because you yeah. sing the bridge on that. So that that'll happen sometimes. Like, well, yeah. you sing that line. So mm-hmm. see what you want to mm-hmm. say. Right. And then, okay. and then uh, very collaborative. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah we're we're we we've, yeah. we've absolutely. And um, then we'll we'll hand it over to a uh, Bill. And, and, dad, and he just uh, yeah. Beats the <laughs> and he'll lay on top everything. and he'll yeah. do something well, to well, it. Well, also. well, Bill, like, we Bill on drums. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Bill on drums just comes in and kind of just uh, does his magic. Uh, we we have a hard time writing drums. Uh, it's just. I never played drums. Uh, David can actually play drums. He's actually pretty decent, but he just, he has ideas and he gives him the bill and Bill just runs away with it. Like our, uh, my favorite example of Bill taking the drums to a song and completely changing them. We have a song on our first album called Ninja and um, it was really kind of straight up when we first played it, uh, first wrote it and David did a really cool job with it. But then Bill came in and he started playing like these like James Brown funk drums on it and he just, 
I don't know what he does, but he lays back just enough behind the beat to where it kind of has it has this really cool feel to it, and it's very unique. Um, and uh, we don't you don't get that with many other drummers that we've experienced with, and uh, that's why it's always good having him in the band as well. We love what they. Well, everyone everyone brings something. And that's the thing with a band, any band, whether you're a cover band, original band, right? You're the four people. They generally start to take on roles, mm-hmm. and you know who's got the lyrics, who's got the hooks, who's gonna gel it all together, yeah. and like you get comfortable in those roles, and you need everybody to kind of yeah. bring those things to the table. So it's yeah. it's great that you guys have that. That's why probably why you've been together so long, right? Two thousand nine, you guys. Yeah, yeah. Like two thousand nine we started, and uh, you know even nowadays it's funny because you can tell from our newer stuff, which isn't even close to being released yet, um, that we have for another EP that we're putting together, um, the songs that David has been writing and the songs that I have been writing or that we've been writing, um, Amanda and I, are starting to kind of sound similar. Um, mm-hmm. And well, you're uh, influencing each other. We're influencing like each other in a positive way. Cool for me to see because I don't, I don't. Again, I can't really play anything, so I don't write. <laughs> sure. Yeah, but without, yeah, but you're. I mean, you're responsible for a lot of those, those vocal yes, flourishes I am, that you make the song. Forget it. There you go. In case we didn't mention, <laughs> these two are engaged and they're going to be married in a month. Congratulations. Thanks. Thank I don't think you. we said that on the show, actually. Yeah. We were chatting about it no, beforehand. We, we kind of inferred that they had a relationship going, but. Uh, yeah, yeah. We didn't uh, officially. So, yeah. We actually um, just met him right before we came. <laughs> <laughs> he seemed like a good guy. You know? He had a guitar in his hand. How, how, how bad could he be? <laughs> <laughs> Guitar players are always safe, right? Yeah, <laughs> uh, technically, I'm a bass player, so. Oh, that's know. true. Oh, that's true, wild. too. Get out. Yeah, I know. It's funny because, you know, I see all these things on the internet where it's like, oh, the bass player is, you know, nobody ever likes them, and I get upset. Right, those, <laughs> those little memes where they yeah. have, like, the guitar, the drums, the bass. I know. I yeah. saw that the other thing day. you do, the bass player's character is the only one without a name, and he's TB player, and I love that so much. That's, that's <laughs> but so then the Wolfman shows up. Well, yeah, he does show up. <laughs> right, that's right, that's right. Well, I, I saw a meme the other day. It was like, they had the guitar player, and he had, like, two, it was like, it was like bathroom, bathroom, people like mm-hmm. it looked like yeah. bathroom door people and it had thick guitar- stick figures yeah, yeah <laughs> thick stick figures and it had like the guy he had the guitar in his hand he had two girls and then it had the drummer and there was like a hundred girls like kind of like passed out and it had the bassist there was another bassist <laughs> 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 nice. yeah that's about right nice. 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 i had a friend once tell me he goes does anyone really care about the bass drive in any of these songs I'm like yeah actually actually the, the bass, the is bass driving player the bus. Does. <laughs> yeah, there you go <laughs> we all fight for our due when yeah. we, you know that's why it's called the bass it's the yeah, bass of the whole thing that's it's right. the foundation that's why i like to sing a lot yeah. and yell. <laughs> You know. Yeah, you're adding. See, you had to add value. You had to bring the harmonies to, too, right? You yeah. got to do what you got to do. So, what's life like on Long Island as a punk rock band? It's pretty <laughs> great. I don't know. What do you feel, like, Amanda? I mean, I think it's a pleasant experience. You I guys know. getting? You guys get booked? You got gigs? You yeah, you got? You getting paid? Like, yeah. what's oh, what's the story? We're getting paid a little by little. We broke even. <laughs> yeah, that's a, a good sign. There yes. are some of our shirt prints that we don't have anymore, yeah. which is kind of like cool to see. So well, it's. Mm-hmm. It's cool. The more we've been playing, the more we've been um, finding more people that are, are looking for it, which is a great thing. Right. So it's just it, the more we go out, the mm-hmm. kind of more energy we get back. Absolutely. Right? And what we're we're doing right now is we play a lot in the island. Uh, we play in the city. Uh, mm-hmm. We play Brooklyn. We really like Brooklyn. Cool. Um, and now we're starting to branch out. We played uh, MIT this year. We played at their thing called the Steer Roast, where they roast like a giant cow. There were fire dancers before us. It was an experience. It was great. I loved nice. it. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Flames everywhere. There was fire and, and Bad Mary. And then um, and we played uh, MIT. We played in the radio station. Um, then we went down to Philadelphia. We played at the Liberty Music Fest in Philadelphia. We played at the uh, a, a room called a uh, uh, club called the, the Grape, Grape Room. room. Which was awesome, and we're actually going back really there. Really cool inside too, like a lot of cool like murals and art and stuff. It's a good rock club. Yeah, cool. and we're going back there in another week for a Halloween party, uh, and then or and need then costumes. We're yeah, we do need costumes. <laughs> if you think we'll of talk, anything? We'll talk about that. Zombie punk. Point. I mean, zombie zombies punk. are always in, zombies right? Are this cool. year, I just don't have any latex, liquid latex for my face. We can. <laughs> <laughs> just, you know, um, we can. Amazon. <laughs> 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 Now let me yeah. ask you, why on Bad Mary? Where did that come from? Um, word soup. Uh, <laughs> you want to take the lead on that one, Amanda? Um, we we were called something else at first. That uh, if you Google searched it, there were like a bunch of other bands. Well, there were clubs. There that's were, when we were uh, uh, a, a cover band. Um, and we were looking, I think, start originals, and we we're kind of like, mm-hmm. okay, do we stick with with this and try to go off from there, or is this the point where we kind of like, okay, let's 
you know, re regroup and just kind of put forth a new, mm-hmm. a new thing. And because it was taken a lot, we were kind of like, you know what, this it, we were Madame X is what it was, and that's kind mm-hmm. of. That's a painting. There's a, a mm. bar called that. There was like a, another band from Europe that was called that because we kept getting random Facebook people thinking that we were them. And we're like, no, we're not. So we're like, mm. we're already getting confusion and we haven't even put anything out. So let's yeah, see what we got. Free publicity. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so what we did is um, we had this long, we have a long Bad Mary Facebook conversation that we were going back and forth for probably about a couple of weeks. We're still going back and, and forth. And it was just like, well, yeah, but like for the band name. <laughs> we scrolled all the way up. I think mm-hmm. it would take me like until. <laughs> It'll take you a year. Yeah. Right. Um, so we had. And I'd um, miss all the current conversations. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. We, uh, we, we were kind of bouncing name ideas off each other and we wanted to make sure that the dot com wasn't taken or we wanted to make sure that there were no other bands the with the name things, yeah. Yeah. stuff mm-hmm. like that and uh, we wanted to make it memorable we wanted to somehow make it punky sounding um, make it something that slightly lets you know that we have a female front 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 woman and mm-hmm. then uh, and then um, clarity was yeah, a big thing clarity. because you go to you go to a lot of shows and you you're like Hi, thanks for coming. Where and like you can't hear <laughs> right. anybody. Warm cabbage. Or like it's like oh they're great. What are they call? I don't know, but this was a great show. And then you leave and you never know. Good point. What yeah, it was. that does happen a lot. Yeah. Yes. So uh, one of David's actually Sue I think is it's the one David's that David's wife, wife yeah. Sue um, brought this up. You want something that you can scream across a parking lot and have be clearly understood. Cool. And that was like the final like descriptive of like it's clear, it's punchy. You know, there's a girl here. You know, you're gonna have. If you don't know the band at all, you know something's gonna happen because it's like, man, what is that? Um, I gotta say, I that's like the most thought first. behind any band name and I've ever heard. Well, yeah, because we most people are like, fuck it. Yeah, <laughs> we just like they got well, drunk one night and picked the name. What we did the first time, I think, like we had talked about Madame X for a yeah, while, but yeah. that was what we kind of had did the first mm-hmm. time when we ran into so many like issues with that. That that's why we didn't do that when we kind of were going for the okay. Well, what's it? What's it really going to be? What are we set up? What what are you know? What sure. are we putting out there now? And then uh, um, and, and then what happened is is we yeah s- I didn't like it at first because yeah. I was woken up to hey David had this idea and I was like oh, yeah later on leave me alone I did really like that I'm sorry I was and then proud. and then uh, David went and designed our logo which um, he did a really uh, I think a great job on the logo I think the logo is memorable it's our drum skin uh, our bass drum skin uh, head uh, head rather and then. Um, we use that logo for everything. It's memorable. It's bright for some reason. Oh, yeah, we got that for Bill for his birthday. It's the pinkest <laughs> of the fun. pink uh, mm-hmm. uh, that we could have picked, and we picked pink and black, so it would be punky and bounce right off of it. And uh, to this day, I think it's been pretty good for us. Uh, people know who we are, at least by name. Um, our name does stand out uh, when we've played uh, a lot of shows. But, yeah, we've been playing a lot, too. Uh, we went down to Delaware. We played something called the Dewey Beach Music Conference, which was so cool. That was really fun. And then, uh, yeah, we, we actually... Uh, Where's the furthest you guys have traveled yet so far? That Probably that. Delaware. We did that in a day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cool. that was rough. And, and came back. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we, <laughs> we went... Uh, we started our trek at about... 4.30 or so, mm-hmm. I guess. Around yeah, there. you guys picked me up from work at like yeah. 4.30. Our set was at 11, so we get there at like 9.30 or so. We play at 11. We hang around for like, because mm-hmm. we want to actually like meet the people that are there and not go right back, even uh-huh. though it's like midnight. So we head back at like 1.30, I guess. No, and then I, everybody had work the next day. I think great. Oh, oh I think work the next day. Yes. We walked into the house at like 5. And so, you know, <laughs> got, some, got some sleep and then got up for work. But yeah, you know what? That's it was. You know what though? It wasn't it was nearly great. as bad. It, no, we had a great time. I had a great time. I would and do it again. Yeah, we. Uh, I would like to stay there that. longer. Yeah, honestly. that's a good conference. It uh, it's a really good time. But yeah, you know, we play with. Uh, there's a really good punk rock collective. To come back to your Long Island um, mm-hmm. question, <laughs> there's a really good punk uh, punk rock collective on this island. Um, we play a lot with a handful of uh, punk bands on the island. Um, our friends people. in the. Samurai Pizza Cats are a big ska band, ska punk band. Um, there's another ska punk band called The Crisis Crowns that we've played with a bunch. We're actually playing a Christmas party with them. Our buddies in Flak Jacket, who were playing Halloween. We're playing Punktoberfest with them and Halloween with them. Oh, yeah. That's out east, right? That's out, yeah. that's out in Patchogue, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we have that for the Great South Bay. And then, um, you know, there's like all new episode that we play with. There's yeah. Mega Weapon. Oh, and then our friends, Jay and the Nines from Brooklyn. So oh, we got a lot of shout outs to give on sorry. this one. Yeah. Sorry, guys. <laughs> That's am okay. I, am, I, am I wrecking everything? I just want to <laughs> let you guys know out He's there that so there, excited. there are sure. punk rock bands out there on Long Island that are doing this Find thing. Find them. And, listen uh, to their music. 
And we, you know, playing with playing with playing with basket case was a lot of fun too. Yeah. We I <laughs> had a lot of fun that night when we did that. So yeah, I don't, I don't even we I, have, we've never mentioned that we on haven't the talked about it on our show at all. Well then, so it, mm. the secret's out. Joe and I are in a <laughs> Green Day tribute band <laughs> oh, called Basket Case. I'm sorry, did I blow your cover? Yeah, <laughs> no, it's all good. I, I just mean, don't think it ever came up. It's just right. yeah, weird. weird. Um, We're yeah. always talking about movies. So. Well, this, is, this is how we met these two. I, I like was movies. by going and uh, they, you guys opened. For you us. opened yeah. for us as Madam X. Years ago. Years ago, a long yeah. time ago. You opened for oh us as God, Madam X. Was that with the um the me first and the gimme gimme? Me, uh, it was me, yes. it was me next to the gimme more. Yes. I thought that name was amazing. Yes. I still think it's amazing. That was at, Re- <laughs> was that a, that was at Revolution, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah or yeah. Ollie's, po- Ollie's point, I, I think, at the time. Ollie's at that point. Yeah. Oh, Whatever geez. it was. Oh, I feel old now. Yeah, we're all getting old. That's yeah. okay. You're now, still younger than us, so don't yeah. worry. <laughs> now, your guys' music was also in a film. Is that correct? Oh, yeah. Um. Well, a couple. Um. Well, the one... Um. Just recently, something got licensed, yes. right? Recently, La- well, last year there was um, it was an independent film. Actually, a friend of ours uh, was working on it and and got in touch with us. And one of our songs is in that. Um, I haven't seen it yet, though. I still want to. It's called Viral Beauty. So it was kind of doing oh, that's like the, the yeah. The, and that's the one like Perez Hilton is attached to. Is I, that I right? Think and, so yeah, because oh, okay. I saw the trailer online. I think I, we were chatting about that last night, right? It's the Perez Hilton. So what did you guys? You were in the movie. No, no, no we no, just no. had a song oh, okay. in that one. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. But then the uh, the one we just got licensed for um, for those of you who are fans of old B movies, uh, Roger Corman um, did a I guess a pseudo sequel to Death Race two thousand called Death Race twenty fifty that takes place <laughs> fi- obviously fifty years after Death Race two thousand, and uh, we had two songs licensed for it. We're not sure if they're in the actual film yet, but we know that they Roger have been licensed. Roger Corman at Comic Con cool. told David that yes, they are in the film. Cool. So. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. we got two so songs licensed for that. that. That's um, congratulations. The that's a big for deal. That looks so far. On that. I'm just so, I'm just excited to see that. that. Those were words that came out of my mouth. I promise. Which so which songs were licensed? There can. Sucks to be you, um, which is off of Killing Dinosaurs. I think both of them off both of Killing are. Dinosaurs and Hanging Around. Cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you guys acted as well in no. some of them? No. Oh, in, in, no. In, in, no. Unfortunately, okay. no. Not yet. We're, we're friends do a web series uh, called Blake and Beef that we uh, we are in, and a couple of our songs have been used, too. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's being uh, that's put in post, on the post-production right now. Internet cool. And yeah, but... Uh, towards the end of the month? Yeah, actually, that debuts on October, October 24th, 24th, but yeah. Death Race 2050 comes out in early 2017. Cool. Yeah, we'll be looking so for fun. that. Hopefully, maybe you can introduce us to the creators, and we can have a, them on the show as okay. well. So yeah, we'll, we can, we can see if we can we'll complete them. the yeah. circle of life. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> cool. He's responsible for the um, the original Little Shop of Horrors before like the... The musical. Uh, sure. Right. He's also responsible for the Fantastic Four movie in the 90s that never saw a release. Um, oh it's, wow! It's probably better than all the other Fantastic Four movies they've made, but yeah, there's Roger Corman's Fantastic Four. It's like uh, a legend. Of, but you um, can't see it anywhere, or you, you can. can. You can get it on like DVD. Okay. Uh, you can, or you can find it on YouTube. It's probably there illegally. Gotcha. Um, you know, don't break the law, guys. But you know, but check it out. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, that's also something that he did. But uh, yeah, no, he's a, you know, everyone. Roger Corman. You know, you look him up if you're not familiar with him. He did so much old. Like he's responsible for. A lot of of our famous directors right now, he would pretty much give them no budget and just be like, make a movie. Mm -hmm. Um, Martin Scorsese is the one name that pops out of my head that I think worked with him a lot. Um, I don't know if George Lucas and Steven Spielberg did, but they might have. I don't know. I have to do my research. It's been a while since I read up on him. But uh, a lot of of, of that stuff. So Death Race 2050 is ridiculous and looks awesome, and I can't (laughs) wait to see it. And hopefully our songs are in the movie. (laughs) But they have been licensed. They have been licensed. So... Well, how would you like to play us another tune? Sure, we and can then do we'll that. come back and chat a little bit more. And what song you guys want to play for us next? Um, this what? one is uh, yeah, we're playing Trouble. Trouble. Um, this song is uh, not not one that we do live that much. Um, for some reason, we're uh, it's definitely something that uh, I think is better suited for like an acoustic performance. Uh, it's a slower song. It's a little bit darker. This one was also written differently um, yeah. than mm-hmm. the other ones, the ways that Mike described before. So me, Mike, and my dad actually sat down and kind of put the music behind it, and I made up just, like, notes to it. So the lyrics I wrote the day we recorded it. Cool. So this the song. Yeah. So they must have been flowing. special. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, they were flowing. Awesome. All right, so you ready? Sweet, make me think you're not a cocktail, fuck you. I can't sing out 
That's a hit right there. Have I ever heard one? That's that is a, a hit. really good one. Yeah. Thank you. That's really awesome. I'm Thanks excited. Yeah, we're going to cut these into actual music videos for you guys Ooh. too. So you'll have. Nice. We'll have the whole podcast, but we'll. Very cool. We'll you'll have the music you. videos. I like that. You cool. guys can have them, all that stuff. Thanks. You could tell that that was a different style. Like you mm -hmm. introduced it. You could tell it went somewhere else. But I, re I re enjoyed that. That yeah. was good. Thank um, you. Yeah, it's definitely something that was a little different. Um, you know, even it's slower. It's slower electric which is weird. Um, it was one of those things where we started playing it acoustic. Amanda and I just for, you know, kicks. We were playing um, in our living room. I would play it, and I was like, you know, I just, I need for acoustic. I want to play it quicker um, because it's heavier when it's when it's electric, so you can kind of give it that Sink weight. Sink into it, yeah. And right. uh, acoustic-wise, it's like we got one guitar and a voice. We need to kind of do something. Dry. I mean, we're always playing stuff way too fast. Like, we're always playing <laughs> stuff faster than the recording. So it's one of those things where it's like this one actually – definitely is also faster than the recording but it's actually one of our slower songs that we've written it's probably one of our longest songs is probably like four minutes long it's like takes three sure. months to listen to it it's so yeah. long. <laughs> you know, i think most of our songs are under three minutes if not under two so yeah. well, it's that's... nice to have different versions of it yeah also. that's yeah. what's cool about it yeah. yeah that's that's what we're trying to do and amanda i think did a really cool job with the lyrics on that one uh, i had no lyrics i was just like i don't know just take it and run with it and I, I think we were well, doing american we idiot were, at that time we were doing american idiot at that time um and uh your character at that time kind of was going she was in a strange relationship in that show so it was like mm -hmm. kind of the lyrics to that were kind of like an outlet to the character's frustration which is strange but i had like a lot going on during that time so it was kind of like how do i make this all make sense at once and it just kind of like and it worked i mean the song i think i really awesome i really like that song i really like yeah. how it came together Absolutely. And is that what? So when was that recorded? Uh, that's on a, one of the. That's yeah, on an album now, on, we or it's could coming. Save the world. Yeah, that's, that's definitely. Um, so that was the yeah. the 2016. Mm -hmm. the, the latest one. release. Yeah. yeah, the latest release. Um, we um, we recorded that around the same time as we recorded Killing Dinosaurs. We recorded a lot that like that summer. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, we 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 were gonna originally release a full album. We were gonna release a, release a second full album called We Could Have Saved the World. And uh, we were talking to people, and they're like, you know what? It's going to be very hard for you guys to get reviews. It's going to be very hard for the music to get out there if it's a 12-track It's also um, just LP. more options. Like at, yep. at shows now, it's like, hey, we have EP, album, this, and that. And like, mm -hmm. it's just not everybody wants a full. a full. you know. And if they do want, everything's available. So there's like a, there's a ton of people out there that are now saying, like, the music business is dead. It's you just can't, different. You can't go it's... out and, like, do you make your money off of touring? Do you make your money off of album sales? Well, album sales are kind of shot yep. yeah. because people go on Spotify iTunes and, and go, I like this one song. You don't buy an album. And even that, it's not. they don't even buy anything. 
They just yeah. go on Spotify and listen yeah. to it. And, um, you know, it's great for us for, for exposure. It's great for us for people to hear us because now we have fans kind of I mean, all I've over the world. I mean, I've paid at right? least like 0. 0.0007 cents from, you know, listening to us on Spotify. That's just awesome. My own stuff. You know, if we get That's six me. cents for every thousand plays, that'd be great. But like the thing <laughs> with that is that, you know... Um, I think that's there's a little bit of a, a weird mentality where people feel like they don't have to pay at all for music. Um, and while it's great for us to get our music out there and we want as many people to listen to it as possible and it's not like one of those things where it's like, I want my money, you know. Um, <laughs> it's one of those things where it's like, that's the mentality right now, so we got to run with it. And yeah. luckily for us, it shows people really like buying the physical CDs still. Uh, they still will buy our EPs. Punk fans are old school. Yeah, but even like I like kids. that about them. I just went to a Descendants show on Saturday. Oh, oh, I wanted to go. So, <laughs> like... I'm the one. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> Which was awesome, right? I mean, yeah. it's like those guys are just... They have such a great story. I'm dying right. to see the documentary that was made on them. That's It's on. It's available on Amazon Prime. But um, they just have... I, they were at um, Riot Fest in Chicago yep. and I didn't get to see them there and then and they were here in New York, so I got to got to go see them. But we, yeah, the old school fans, they're just so much cooler. What's weird though is too, is we even though noticed that for us with like the younger people, we'll still buy stuff. We'll still buy the CDs. Like well, because they're probably influenced by their old yeah. school parents Absolutely. that are yeah. getting them into that stuff, Absolutely. right? I mean, there was they're... one show we played that um I think was in all ages and we we didn't yeah. know it or something. And the band that went on right before us had like their entire high school there. And they were a young band. They were like a young ska band, I want to say. Yeah, they were like <laughs> right? a young funk great. ska thing. They, they were, were great, like, really I great. had so much fun. Like, they were young and great. And yeah, cool. their crowd was amazing. But we realized, like, they were still staying because all of their parents had to come pick them up. Yeah. <laughs> so we were like, oh, my God, they're going to be here for us. And, like, the way that they, like, wanted to know more about stuff and just wanted to know, like, when more shows like this were happening, it was, like, very cool to see because it was all these, like, high school kids desperately looking for, like, where can we get more of this? What it, And it's just... Like nice. and and because they, they listen because they listen to the radio yeah. and this is not on it. Uh, yep, and they yeah. exactly. So it's like, what is this? They, it's, it's like they're discovering well, something. It's like I don't know if I would have been able to get through high school without punk rock. Like right. I'm gonna yeah. say that right now. I mean, it's my favorite, you know, genre of music. If I didn't have, you know, a CD binder with, um, with, um, oh my God, Green CD Day's binders. complete discography, mm-hmm. all of Rancid's like stuff. Band. Um, Bad Religion, Descendants, Ram- Ramones, all those bands. You can name them. If I didn't have a binder, CD binder full of that, Bouncing Souls, whatever, um, I don't think I would have got through high school. I think I think for me, uh, and like what's funny is that you always hear, you always listen to people, and, I, and this always offends me. Uh, you always listen to like musicians who are like, oh yeah, I started out playing punk rock, and then I obviously grew up. And it's like, well, maybe you're just a jerk. <laughs> like... like, like <laughs> Like then you didn't really play punk yeah, music. If like, you could say something like that, yeah. right? Come on. I mean, like, <laughs> well, I like Green this. Day. Green Day gets a bad rap all the time by real musicians, right? I mean, it's a bunch of BS. We know it's a bunch of BS. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would like to see them try to write Dookie. I would like to see another real musician try to write that album. Like, oh, go go out and try to do brilliant. it. Try to write something that that sounds that good. Uh, try to write American Idiot. You can't. Exactly. Um, and I will defend Green Day to for <laughs> till the day I die because the first band I ever ever really got into. Uh, I was born in 1986, so Dookie came out when I was eight. Um, Insomniac was the first album I saved up my allowance for for an entire summer to buy. Nice. Um, <laughs> you know, I played Saint Jimmy. Uh, that it's a band that's very very close to 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 my childhood. So well, seeing, I'll defend that band American forever. Seeing American Idiot on Broadway was technically like so our first, first date. date. The first date. Oh cool. Was, oh that's we outrageous. We had already like knew each other, so we was like had heard that it was closing, and I think it didn't close for, still for a while. Yeah, after yeah. We were like, no, there's a rumor that it might be closing. We need to see it now. So we kind of like planned. Did to you go Did you get a chance to see it when Billy Joe with played? Them? No. No. Uh, no. I did. <laughs> yeah, we got to see Bill. we got to see Billy. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> that's really cool. Um, that's sick. Did you guys ever have an opportunity to play CBGBs, or did you miss that whole thing? Um, I thing? didn't play it, but I had gone in high school. Um, okay. I we never got it was closed by the time we started sure. playing. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we played. I played a bunch of. I played Don Hills in the city. I've played a bunch of those type of like Lower East Side um, places. We've played. Um, we played the Lit Lounge when it was still open. That became like a little oh. Lower East Side kind of spot, and uh, the Trash Bar in Brooklyn. Oh, oh yeah, the Trash Bar. Now they're closing there. too. They closed. They're, they they closed, closed. Right? Are they moving? Year. Didn't I hear they were? Mo- they're moving I'm, to Bushwick, just like <laughs> Trash and Vaudeville is moving to a less expensive place. I don't know if they're actually moving or if they had to sadly close. Um, the trash Bar was great. I loved it there. Trash yep. Bar was awesome. Um, we played I a need play- to bring that dress back. I made a dress out of a trash bag and. <laughs> 
a garbage bag. It was great. So I you had your own closing that. clothing line. Yeah. I was right? such a designer that day. Yeah, nice. Oh, so couture. <laughs> Please find a man who's clothing line. <laughs> I mean, that's yeah. DIY yeah. to the max, though, right? You know. Yeah. Uh, I gotta do that. I forgot about that. Yeah, you gotta make a garbage dress. <laughs> 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 Best dress ever. <laughs> That's awesome. That'll be the new style. It'll yeah, catch ev- on. Everyone's yeah. wearing trash. Absolutely. So was Green Day, like, would you say Green Day is your first band that you, you said that's the first album you say. That. What Me, about you, Amanda? Personally? What was your, like, first love band that you kind of, um, sings you, songs you used to sing along to? What's or, funny, you know? I grew up clearly with my dad. Yes. So I listened to a lot of what he listened to in the house because it wasn't like I had to go out of my way to find music. It was always, like, my uh, grandmother, his mom was a big band singer his sister plays the oboe. Like, there's everybody has music in my family. So I grew up, like, listening to... Um, the Police is still my favorite band cool. now, but that was definitely one of the CDs. Like, Sting in any capacity was always oh. on, but he listened to everything. Like, a lot of Chicago, um, a lot of... He liked Super Tramp. We listened to, like, Huey <laughs> Lewis, oh, Vanilla Boston, Fudge. Vanilla Fudge. He loved them. Grand Funk Railroad, he loved them. Um, me, personally... Like, I, so that's what I started out with, but mm-hmm. then... Um, Blair, my friend Blair actually gave me a burned copy of Dookie that she had drawn all over in Sharpie. And that was one of like my first CDs that I had independently of my parents like music. Sure. So that that was something that. Yeah. And I mean, the reason why we we, um, Amanda loves the police. So the reason why the first CD that I did buy for myself, though, ever was uh, Goo Goo Dolls Dizzy Up the Girl. Nice. (laughs) Nice. I remember that vividly at Tower Records. And I thought that the title meant something like dirty i had no idea so i like went to the person behind the counter is like it can be like do you have this one and she kind of looked at me like yeah did you have did it have like the explicit lyrics on it or something no it didn't even really like yeah you were reading in more to it than it actually was i was just afraid i was gonna get in trouble i don't know (laughs) too bad tower records and places like that closed that's such a good experience you just go hang out we would go there all the time loved it yeah Yeah. album there were some times where uh, my dad and i would go and not really looking for a specific album but just look at the covers and there were a couple that was just like let's get this what is this about well that's something to be said too about album art i I mean there are still people putting out uh, i know we keep bringing up green day but uh the new uh album with bang bang on it um has awesome awesome album art but do you get the album the people aren't really getting the album are are you guys into the art that goes on to your albums that you're putting out Um, and what are you Who's doing that, and how are you putting that together? Well, the first album is just our logo. Um, David did that. Uh, the second the, album, the first album was very like we did a lot. No of that. budget. No, yeah, it was pretty yeah. much yeah. us on our own. Yeah. And it was like we really want to make this happen. We're just gonna yeah, do we wrote it. these and great songs, and we David, put David them did a lot of work on that. Mm-hmm. David, wise, like so. on uh, David's a, David's a designer. Sure. So um, we're lucky that he has just amazing skills when it comes to that stuff, and uh, we're in. in <laughs> Uh, I think always gonna indebted to him for that because like you know he's just good with that stuff and he, and the album um, though it's simple it's just our logo um, it's the whole it's black you know black uh, album with you know the the pink and white logo and it just pops and it just you can it's easy to see um, for the second e- for the EPs we wanted to do um, we wanted to do photos uh, photo covers so like covers of the band so we went to uh, we went to a certain spot that we probably sh- shouldn't have gone to um, and took no, pictures in Kings it's Park. Good, good spot. Um, I know the spot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we went to a spot in Kings Park and took pictures with our good buddy uh, Nick, who's our, been our photographer forever, and he's awesome. Uh, we, we love him as a human being and as a photographer, and he took some awesome pictures of us for these these second EPs, or which was going to be an album at that point in time. And um, we want to do photos. So now for our next EP, which is going to be called Glitter Bomb, uh, we want to figure out some cool artwork that I we can do for it. I just want a glitter cannon at some point. <laughs> file, with glitter with, file of glitter with every album. That's that so. cool. Glitter, uh, glitter is the worst thing on the planet Oh, it's for the me. worst. It's the worst. It never goes the worst. away. It's, uh, Dimitri Martin always had the thing. It's, you know, it's the herpes of the art world. It's, it's the herpes of makeup also. I had, I've been in um, Rocky Horror a couple of times and covered in glitter throughout that. And it will be on you for the well, next several years. Uh-huh. Actually, yeah. it's, it's, to tie all this together, when, I pl- when, we, when we did American Idiot last summer and I, when I played St. Jimmy, I had a pocket full of glitter that I would drop on the two characters at some point to, I was like I don't know I asked them if I could do it and they said yeah so <laughs> so I had this glitter in my pocket and I use it and, and the glitter still finds a way onto me it's on my phone still it's red glitter <laughs> it's also red glitter. So it's specifically red glitter 
Yeah. And I'll still like I'll look up and he'll have like a piece of glitter like under his nose. I think because it's when I wear those pants, it's still in the strip club again. No. That red glitter. It's it's in the pockets of my my jeans. You just like to keep glitter in your pockets. You know what the thing is is I just pour glitter on myself every day. Yeah. Glitter fetish. I've heard that. I think that's a thing. Let's Google it. Don't don't Google it. You might end up with some. You might have to clear the web history after that one. You might be. Oh, I got viruses again. Oh damn it. You guys are awesome. Thanks. We loved having you on today. Yeah, awesome. You guys kick ass. You guys want to take us out with a song? Um, you good you wanna, for three? Or it's up to another? you guys. What do you want to do? Sure. Sure. We um, can do. Uh, we can do. You want to do better days? We can do better days. Sure. All right. Before they start, there. Uh, thank you to Bed Mary for coming in and hanging out with us. Thanks. Uh, you guys are awesome. Thanks for playing. It's been awesome. You can find them on October twenty second at the Punktoberfest in Bayshore, New York. You can find them on October twenty eighth at the Rock and Roll Halloween with Bed Mary in East Northport. Or you can find them on October 29th in the Grape Room in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And for all their other information, you can go to badmary.com. Back down here once a week and just sure. play stuff for me. <laughs> <laughs>